Hello, my name is Chrissy Chandler, and welcome to Remake Learning Days. Hello, I'm Leanne Taylor Knight with the DeBruce Foundation. Welcome. Hello, I'm Terry Thompson from the Museum at Prairie Fire. Welcome. Hello, I'm Harlan Brownlee from Kansas City Young Audiences. Welcome. Hello, my name is Lauren Joy Graves, and I'm from the Olathe Public Library. Welcome. Hello, I'm Christy Larson from the American Royal. Welcome. Hello, I'm Nova Clark for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Hi, my name is Alex Olson with the DeBruce Foundation Career Corps. Welcome. Hello, I'm Emily Roden from Burns McDonald. Welcome. Hello, I'm Lindsay Constance from Climate Action KC. Hello, I'm Tom Gray from Make 48. Welcome. Hello, I'm Cheryl Williams with Hallmark Supplies, though, where children create, have fun, and feel good about their own ideas. Hello. I'm Ann Zimmerman with the KC STEM Alliance. Welcome. Remake Learning Days Kansas City is a festival designed for families that celebrates the many learning opportunities found in our community. It highlights innovative learning experiences for youth, and most importantly, for youth and families to learn and discover together right here in the Kansas City region. Remake Learning Days events are designed to be hands-on, relevant, and engaging. The majority of events are free. All kinds of organizations open their doors and host events. Schools, museums, parks, libraries, after school organizations, early learning centers, universities, media centers, technology firms, design studios, and more. Clearly, learning can happen anywhere. Events held during Remake Learning Days help kids develop a sense of wonder, creativity, and curiosity by participating in experiences based in the arts, maker-centered learning, the outdoors, science, technology, and youth voice. Together, we're proactively designing Remake Learning Days to address educational disparities so that all learners, whether they're learners who live in poverty, learners of color, learners who may reside in rural areas, girls in STEM, and learners with disabilities feel included. It is so important to us that we make learning opportunities available to all students. So, why do we do this? We're living in a time of remarkable change, and we have been for many years. From the way our cities work, to the way our brains develop. Everything about our world stands to be revised, redefined, and remade. We want families, parents, and caregivers to see what's possible. And to experience a future of learning, whether by coding a robot, creating art, or making a film, conducting science experiments, or exploring the outdoors. These shared experiences are incredibly meaningful. And have shown that when kids become even more passionate about their learning, it ignites a conversation on how we can all create the best possible future for our kids. So, this upcoming May, we can't wait to see intergenerational learning happening in all kinds of learning spaces. We can't wait to spotlight the amazing learning that is happening in our neighborhoods and across our region. We can't wait to celebrate together. And we can't wait to see the joy in kids' faces as they discover something new that sparks their curiosity. Happy Remake Learning Days! Happy Remake Learning Days! Happy Remake Learning Days, Kansas City. Wishing you all a happy Remake Learning Days. Enjoy. So happy Remake Learning Days, Kansas City. My name is Callan Fairchild Zend. I am the communications manager for the KC STEM Alliance and your regional producer for Remake Learning Days Kansas City. As you can see in the video that we just shared, Remake Learning Days is built around the idea that no matter where we sit in the community, we each have a role to play in reaching our young people and remaking learning. So our goals for today is for you to learn about what Remake Learning Days Across America entails and to get inspired to take part. We hope that you make a new connection, find new ways to collaborate with others, 
And after our breakout session, we'll have some updates on some exciting initiatives that are happening in our region. And by taking part in that discussion, you'll see how you can fit into those, whether or not STEM is your primary focus in your organization. And of course, we hope that by spending some time together this morning, thinking about how we can reignite that spark of joy and learning for the young people in our community, we will create something we can all look forward to together. We like this illustration because it, it emphasizes the idea that learning can happen anywhere that students spend time. So in addition to school, that includes after school spaces, community centers, centers of faith, time they spend with their families or playing in the park or time they spend online. So no matter where we are in the picture, we all have a unique piece of this puzzle and can play a part in helping prepare our young people in our community for futures where they have the problem, problem solving skills they need to prosper and grow. And as we do that, we are forming a STEM learning ecosystem. Here in Kansas City, we call our learning ecosystem STEM Connect KC. And so we invite each of you to think about the unique part you can play. You might know the KC STEM Alliance for our work with FIRST Robotics or Project Lead the Way, but a key part of our work is serving as the backbone organization for the learning ecosystem in Kansas City. And in that role, we champion all things STEM through advocacy. We communicate, we convene, we connect. Um, as we are today, we collaborate and look for those opportunities. And then we love to celebrate the great things that are happening around the learning ecosystem. And one of the key ways we do that is through the STEM Connect KC portal on the kcstem.org website. This is a central place to collect all of the different things that are happening with STEM and experiential learning around the city. It includes a directory of organizations that offer STEM and related programming or support STEM education. There's an event calendar where you are invited to share the opportunities you have from your organization, whether those are oriented for kids or their professional development for educators in this space. There's some curated content around special audiences. And then we have a monthly e-newsletter where we help communicate the things that are happening. And we like to amplify the work you're doing on our social media channels. So if you have not already taken part in STEM Connect KC, we invite you to do so. Anne is going to put into the chat box a link to a frequently asked questions page that has all the forms you need to add your information. And if you've already been using STEM Connect KC, we invite you to share your feedback in the chat. We like to know um, what's working, what's not, um, and ways to improve, but we encourage you all to take part in this because it fits in with Remake Learning Days is our year round space to share these rich learning opportunities with families in our community. We have STEM Connect KC all year and then Remake Learning Days gives us a point in time once a year to really let families experience these things together, get them excited about seeking out more opportunities and really shining a light on the great work that you already do. So they work together hand in glove. The goals of Remake Learning Days really focus on family engagement. If you have children or work with children, you've probably seen that moment when you see the light bulb come on, they get excited about something they just figured out or realize they're capable of doing. And kids love sharing those moments with the grownups in their lives. So Remake Learning Days is an intentional attempt to provide those opportunities and have a lot of them in a short period of time so we can celebrate all of the things we have in our region and, and really be happy and get more families to be aware of the great things that exist already. And when we do this and have a lot of exciting learning happening, um, it will ignite a conversation. And we want to get our stakeholders across the region thinking about what the future of learning should look like and how we can influence that. And by doing this work together and working collaborative, collaboratively to come up with these experiences, we will strengthen our learning ecosystem. The bird's eye view of Remake Learning Days is it's a national celebration. So we're excited to be part of it. It's happening in 17 regions across the country from April 22nd to May 23rd. 
will be celebrating here in Kansas City from May 6th through the 16th. We did participate in Remake Learning Days for the first time last year. We did have 100 events. Uh, we were very excited by that. We had 70 organizations offering activities. And in keeping with the spirit of keeping Remake Learning Days accessible, 91 of those were absolutely free and the rest were very low cost. We had a combination of in-person, virtual, and hybrid formats. We will be offering all three of those formats again this year. Um, as we can tell by today, uh, we don't know exactly what things will be like in May, but we'll be prepared for all circumstances. So our goals for Remake Learning Days in Kansas City in 2022. I like to say we would like to have 100 plus plus events. We hit 100 last year. We would love to really exponentially increase that number this year so that we can reach a lot more children and families. One of the ways we can do that is by intentionally diversifying the types of organizations who are hosting events, um, getting more faith centers, getting more small businesses and corporations to get involved along with all of the event hosts who stepped up last year. Another goal we have for this year is to really get our events together a little bit earlier in the process. This feels aggressive, but we would like to have a core list of events by Friday, February 25th, because that gives us the opportunity to generate more publicity and awareness and get that conversation going about the future of learning. We're also going to be layering in an approach we're calling Remake Learning in Your Neighborhood, which we'll share with you as we go through today. So looking at the nuts and bolts of how Remake Learning Days works, as you saw in the video, there are six learning themes. So if you're thinking about hosting an event, you'll just think about which one is your primary theme. And then you can have as many secondary themes as you'd like because there is a lot of overlap. We love the fact that this is broader than STEM. It includes the arts and youth voice. So really any kind of hands-on experiential learning has a place in Remake Learning Days. There's even a professional development track. So if you're an organization that offers that kind of programming to educators or program providers, we invite you and encourage you to include, include those opportunities as well. So the on-ramp, how do you, officially take part in Remake Learning Days. It all revolves around the Remake Learning Days website. Every region has its own page so that families in our community can see what's happening in the Kansas City region. This is a, a preview of what it looks like. Uh, right now we have four events listed for our region. We'll get that up to 100 plus plus soon. But when families come to the website, they can look for events uh, by theme, you can look by whether it's in person or virtual or a hybrid situation. You can search by age group and you can also search by location. So you can put your zip code in and find out what's close by. Once families um, peruse all the options, they can click through to learn more. And as an event host, this is where you put your information um, that you want families who are thinking about coming to your event to know ahead of time. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And you can collect registrations using whatever system you already use if you're an organization that typically hosts events, or you can add an Eventbrite or Google form to collect that information in advance. So you might be wondering what exactly we mean when we talk about a Remake Learning Days event. Is there some specific, specific definition? And I'm going to now invite Courtney Christensen, who is the Director of Education and Outreach at Scraps KC and is the Program Chair for our Remake Learning Days planning group to talk about um, what makes a, remake, a great Remake Learning Days event. Thank you, Courtney. Thanks, Kellen. Um... I am thrilled to be here this morning and kicking off um, this season for Remake Learning Days. Um, we had so many events last year and they all looked so different. And I think that's part of what made it such a successful time for our city because there was something for everyone, um, every age group, every ability level. And so really the components 
because we're all from such different organizations, um, how we have these base components, but they're going to look really different and that's exciting. And hopefully we can all kind of learn from each other and glean from each other, especially here in a little bit when we go into our um, networking groups. But essentially the first um, kind of foundational aspect of all the events should be that they're hands-on. That's the whole point of Remake Learning Days, um, that it's hands-on learning, um, just because we're finding that that is so much more impactful for kids and adults. Um, and that can look really different. Um, just getting up, moving around, manipulating materials, changes the way that our brain is interacting with things and learning concepts. And so anything hands-on from material exploration, just having a lot of things for people to explore and see what they can do with, that's an event. Um, you can see in this, um, the far right picture of the screen, one of the events we did last year, it was our in-person event. We did one virtual and one in-person. Um, we had a deconstruction day and we had several uh, printers and um, small mm -hmm. electronics. And we had some volunteers here and tools and families got to come and just take things apart and see how they worked. Um, they found gears and they found levers and so we talked about simple machines and what and asked them to you know find what kind of simple machines um, they could see in those. It was a great time. Our families had a great time. I think the caregivers and adults that came along were really surprised to see how engaged their kiddos were. Um, and hopefully it gave them ideas to then take home um, and do things with them that maybe they thought their kids wouldn't be interested in, but they really enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> Simple is good. Simple is usually better. Um, we do a lot of events here, um, generally with around elementary age kids. And, you know, sometimes I come up with an idea and typically if I just give kids materials, they, they usually come up with a better idea than, than I can. And so open-ended, um, you know, sparking curiosity, material exploration. Uh, that middle picture is uh, some roller coasters that some Girl Scouts built with us. Um, marble roller coasters. They're using comb binding and tubes and boxes. Um, and generally, I will put things out and I'll think that they're going to use them in a certain way. And then I'm always um, really impressed and surprised <laughs> at how they how they see the world and different materials. Um, and then, of course, it's so important that we're just having fun. Um, there doesn't have to be a giant takeaway. There doesn't have to be a giant, um, you know, end product in these events. But we do want families to just have fun together learning um, so that we're sparking ideas for when they do go home. Um, these other pictures that you can see, these are some medals that we let people repurpose. Um, with different beads and old costume jewelry. Um, we also made some paperclip and wire rings um, at, a, at a makerspace event at a local school. That's what the, the second picture is there. Um, and I'm just going to show you a few simple, hands-on, fun ideas um, of things that we do here at Scraps. Um, we have Obviously, lots of, if you're not familiar with Scraps, we're a creative reuse center. So we have lots of donations that come in. So that's one great thing about my job in thinking of programming is we do have a lot of materials to glean from. Um, but I tried to pull some things that are things that anyone really has. Um, this is two syringes. This is just colored water and a little bit of tubing. Um, this is a little hydraulics. You can see when I push one end, it pushes out the other end. and we're showing kids how hydraulics work. Um, you could attach, you know, popsicle sticks and make this more um, complex or let them experiment with things, but that's one thing we do. Um, we build little sculptures. This is a little person made out of bottle caps. So we did drill holes in these caps and use some wire, but um, just really simple things that people have. I love using things that people might have at home so that then when they go home, they can, recreate that experience or do something different, but it just gets them thinking outside the box. Um, along with those medals, one thing we're gonna do this summer, it's called the Hero Project. We get tons and tons of trophies. This is just a repurposed trophy 
we're gonna let kids in our summer uh, field trips create a trophy for someone that they might call their hero and give it to them. Um, <clears throat> and I was gonna do one quick thing with everyone to kind of just get us thinking a little bit and moving around. So if you have a retractable pen, it needs to be a clicky pen. I want you to grab it off your desk. If you have one, if you don't, that's okay. Um, we do this with Girl Scouts to teach potential and kinetic energy with springs. So your pen should, the top of it should unscrew. So go ahead and unscrew the top. And then you're gonna have this little, sometimes it's metal or plastic piece. You need that. That's, that's gonna be what we call our leap bot. And then carefully pull out, you should have kind of the stick with the ink and it should have a spring on it. So we talk with Girl Scouts about potential and kinetic energy. This is a brownie um, badge work and how when we compress a spring, we're storing potential energy in the spring. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm holding my thumb over the bottom of the spring because otherwise your spring will fly off, your pen won't work anymore. If you lose your insides to your pen, come by Scraps, Casey, and I'll give you a new pen, I promise. Okay. Um, so we're gonna press our little leap bot down on our springs. So we're storing potential energy. We're gonna turn it to connect energy by letting it go. See if you can do it. I can usually hit the ceiling, which really impresses the girls when they come. Oh, yep, I hit the ceiling. So it could be that simple. That is potential and kinetic energy using a retractable pen. Um, after we do that with them, then we try to make it a little more open-ended. So I'll give them, I have a lot of practice, Erica. <laughs> I've done this so many times. Um, after we do that, we'll give them a lot of open-ended materials. So I'm teaching the concept, potential kinetic energy springs, right? Compressing a spring and then releasing it but then I'll give them all sorts of materials and say, go crazy. How can you build one on your own? How else can you, like, how can you take this further? Um, so then this is, it makes it a little bit bigger. I also try to think in terms of like big and small. So like, are we using fine motor skills? Then how can we take that to maybe gross motor skills, especially with littles? So then this is just an old thread spool. This is my late bot I use in, in class. Um, he has a little face stickers and that's just a thread spool and a chopstick, and this is the um, spiral binding off an old spiral. Um, so yeah, potential kinetic energy. It can be that simple. So those are just a few ideas. Um, and then Callan, if you wanna go ahead and go to that next slide, we'll talk about a few specifics of things that we've kind of learned over the last year. Um, we did, two events, one virtual, one in person with Remake Learning Days. And we've done other free um, events throughout the year and <clears throat> things we've thought about, things we've learned as we've brainstormed as a team. Um, thinking about what's your target audience when you're choosing the time of day or the day of the week, you know, obviously if it's something for uh, little kids, we might think about nap times or, you know, nothing super late in the day. Um, or days of the week might affect that. Um, obviously we wouldn't wanna plan something for school age kids if, it, if they're still in school. Um, or you know, parents working, things like that. How do we make our event more accessible to the audience that we wanna reach? Um, another thing to think about is how we're going to invite people to attend and how they're gonna RSVP. Um, and that's something maybe we can brainstorm in our work groups as we talk and network, um, but you know, how will you know how many people are showing up? Um, do you need to know that? Is there a cutoff of your space? How many people can fit? Um, we use Eventbrite, there are plenty of other ways to do that. Um, and then the reality check, what we found with um, free events in the community is typically about half of our RSVPs show up. That might, you know, vary a little bit, but um, if I'm offering something for free and I really think I can fit 20 people in this space comfortably, especially thinking about distancing and COVID, um, 
I'll probably cap that at 25 and then hopefully 15 show up. Um, just planning for that a little bit because what, what I hate to happen is, you know, I cap it at 15 and then only five kids show up. Um, and I could have, you know, presented that information to a lot more families, but I capped the way, uh, the, the signups. Um, and then just making sure that you've got enough people um, to get everyone in without feeling chaotic. Um, you're appropriately staffed for the number and that will depend on the age of your attendees. You know, are there going to be parents there? Making sure parents know like if this isn't a drop off event, this is for everyone. Um, you're gonna come in and engage and, and be with your kids. Um, just making sure that's kind of communicated. Um, lastly, I think just, um, I'll just mention, we have, uh, like I said, tons of materials. And so I just wanna put out there that if you're thinking about an event, um, number one, feel free to reach out to me to see if we might have materials that um, would obviously be less expensive for you to purchase here secondhand um, than new. Or uh, because we are a donation center, we do call outs all the time um, and we have a great responsive community. So if there's something sort of strange that you need a lot of, feel free to reach out to me and we may have it or I may have someone, I may have a source for that or we may be able to just, you know, do a social media post um, and say, hey, for the next week, we're going to, if you, for instance, need, you know, oatmeal canisters, because one time we did a drum making workshop. That's not something we typically take, but if I tell if I tell our uh, community, you know, hey, we need this, then um, typically people will respond really, really positively to that. And I'd love to help anyone with that. So feel free to reach out. Um, and also we do have a lot of ideas on our Pinterest boards. If you need some inspiration, um, I have that divided up by age group and then also by material. So if it's like, I have a ton of this material, what can I do with it? You could look at that. Or if you're saying, you know, I want to offer something for five to eight-year-olds, you could look at that board. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. Um, if you don't mind putting a link to your Pinterest boards in the chat, I'm sure people would appreciate that. There is also a video that our friends in Pittsburgh put together about planning a Remake Learning Days event. So we're going to share the link to that. That's something you can share with other team members if you'd like, um, or when you get ready to brainstorm, if you want a little refresher um, from another perspective, you can watch that as well. So Anne will share that link and we'll have all of these links summarized for you in the follow-up materials. And next up, we want, as you saw in the video, inclusivity and accessibility are important tenants of Remake Learning Days. And I want to invite Erica Mabion, who coordinates STEM programming for Kansas City Public Schools in K through eight, to join us now to share her thoughts um, as an event host and as the co-chair of our accessibility and um, access work group for the Remake Learning Days Planning Committee. So welcome, Erica. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you guys today. I'm, yeah, okay, because screens are all moving. I apologize. I'm getting my uh, eyes coordinated. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so really what I wanted to um, give an opportunity to reflect on my experiences from last year. So um, in, as we work towards planning for this year. So I have a couple of questions. The first question is, who do you know? And the second question is, who is in your neighborhood? So I want you to think about the organizations that you may already be working with. Or maybe you pass by a location and you thought they may be a great um, people uh, organization to collaborate with. So um, really thinking about that there's always an opportunity to, for the ask and they can only say no and then you just knock on another neighbor's door. But you know when you approach them um, with the opportunity to join you in Remake, um, the first request is would you be willing to work with us and work with students who have different needs and with the opportunity to present them with um, STEM learning and STEM activities. And when they go in, you can really give 
a, a holistic perspective of what we do with Remake Learning Days and how the options are endless. And I'm definitely going to use that um, pin activity that Courtney um, uh, shared with us. Um, but I'm really here to talk about inclusivity. And what does that look like and how does that feel? So last year on my res res registration page for my activity that I was hosting for Remake Learning Days, I noted that a lot of families um, were really, really asking, can I bring my sibling? I posted my activity for um, grades three through five. But of course in families, they have you know some that were younger and some were the older. And I really hadn't considered uh, my activity not being inclusive. So I want you to consider when you're creating your activity that it may come with all different age groups and um, maybe parents are coming or grandparents are coming and just considering that aspect of the inclusivity. And then I also want you to consider um, last year I also was uh, working with um, one of our um, participating organizations and the Sherwin Center um, hosted an event and that was servicing students with special needs and exceptionalities. Um, we also talked about having um, events, I think uh, uh, a couple of our um, other organizations hosted events for students with autism or maybe having some hearing that they wanted to wear um, headphones. But consider your exceptionalities and students that may have special needs and consider collaborating with them of things that they may already do and how they serve distinct populations of families. Collaborate your efforts so that you can support each other with the planning of your diversified activities. Don't be shy. The options are limitless and the opportunities are just a door knock away within your neighborhood because we're really focusing on creating activities for neighborhoods this year. The next thing I want to tell you is to not feel inhibited by your lack of resources because up next we're going to talk about mini grants and how they can break down the obstacles to enhance your planned program. And it's my honor and privilege to present the Leanne Taylor Knight, the Executive Director with the Bruce Foundation, who is going to tell us more. Thank you, Erica. First of all, thanks for being a champion last year and a leader last year in this space. It's so good to see you and Courtney here and getting all of us excited about Remake Learning Days, Kansas City. Um, we're very appreciative at the Diverse Foundation of the entire group who is working towards creating this and especially those of you who are thinking about how to address important issues of equity and access. Um, the DeBruce Foundation, um, with the mission of expanding pathways to economic growth and opportunity, is really privileged to be a part of the team and sponsoring this for everyone in the community. We believe that when individuals flourish and succeed, our entire community prospers. And I know each of you know that too. You live it daily in the service and um, efforts that you do already in our great city of Kansas City. Um, it really starts with investing in our young citizens and Remake Learning Days is just this perfect place for families to be engaged and to, as Courtney was saying, you know, turn on those minds of curiosity and getting them excited about all that they can learn and learning together as a family. So we want to inspire the youth and families to participate. Our goal with our sponsorship is really to help the young, every single young person who'd like to participate, participate in some way in Remake Learning Days Kansas City. So we are providing many grants to help decrease barriers across the region. As Erica was saying, this is all about embracing, getting the entire neighborhood involved. So um, nonprofits who are on this call and across the region are invited to apply for $250 um, in order to help participate and remove barriers. 
um, whether it be to offset supply costs, um, staffing, transportation, or food costs, the kinds of things that you need to make this come alive in a neighborhood and be accessible to all walks of life from the families who can participate. We especially encourage everyone to connect strategically and to partner to reach new audiences. And I'm excited to see schools, nonprofits, community organizations, and corporate partners actively involved in the broader community effort. Now, at the beginning of um, the effort, Callan actually mentioned to us how many activities we had last year in the Kansas City region. So if you remember that number, throw it up in the chat right now. How many was it? How many did we have? How many do we have? How many is she shooting for this year? Oh, there we go. My gosh, I see Erica, Courtney, way to go. Lots of them coming through. Yes, we had a hundred. You guys we were like the second largest in the nation last year and it was our first year to do it. So anybody who knows me knows that I'm extremely competitive and we are all about like at least doubling that number. I mean, Callan said hundred plus plus. I'm like, yeah, let's go for 200 this year. And I know collaborating and um, pulling together, we are gonna provide all kinds of access and opportunity to families and our youth across the effort, across the region to be a part of Remake Learning Days, Kansas City. Thanks for being here today. And thanks for all you're doing to already make a difference and expanding pathways to economic growth and opportunity. I think it's time for me to now turn it over to the next person. All right, thank you so much, Leanne. We are so appreciative of everything that the DeBruce Foundation does to support Remake Learning Days and beyond. Um, we know those many grants make a big difference. Uh, so now you have uh, the challenge, uh, you have some ideas, things to think about, and we wanna to touch on um, thinking about how to invite families to your event. Um, one thing that seems obvious, but we want to point out is if you are an organization that works with families, start, start with the people you already know. Let them know you're part of this national initiative and promote your Remake Learning Days and the way you promote all of your other events using your own email lists, social media channels, your website, your events calendars, all of those things. After you do that kind of basic work, think about how you can cross promote with other event hosts. This is how we can help each other bring new audiences to our events. You can do this in a couple of different ways. You've heard um, the talk about who else is in your neighborhood. So that's one place that look on the event calendar to see who else is offering events nearby. But you can also think about cross promoting with other event hosts who are offering activities in the same learning theme that you're offering. So get creative, think about how you can help each other. You can see on this slide that last year, the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum did just that by partnering on an event with the Linda Hall Library and the Science of Sports. All three organizations promoted the events through their channels and um, were able to draw new people to that activity. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't normally offer programming, so I don't have an email list or all of these things, that's fine. This is where we think about creative partnerships. There are organizations on the call who have a lot of kids who are hungry for different experiences. We can look at teaming up with each other um, to, so you can offer your activities um, to a ready-made audience, or you might team up with a library to see if they could use your program and those sorts of things. So those are things we can talk about in our networking session. And we also wanna remember that uh, low tech and high touch can be very effective. A simple flyer that's handed out by somebody, uh, families in your neighborhood trust can work very well. And we are here as your regional producer to help. We will have graphic design templates that you can use to put your information into. There will be a whole set of social media tools for you. And then over the course of the next couple months, as we're all working and planning our events, I will have some office hours on Zoom so you can easily find me to ask questions, do any troubleshooting, or if you really just want somebody to sit and think with you about how you might go about this, I am happy to do that as well. In addition to that, there is some regional marketing support that will help amplify the work that you do in inviting families to your event. There will be a digital marketing campaign and that's designed to drive traffic to the Remake Learning Days website so families can see all of the opportunities across the region. Uh, there will be a social media campaign and we are planning a 
if, if you're familiar with Peach Jar, that's a digital flyer system that many, many school districts in our region use. So we will pay for that um, to get flyers um, to parents through that system. We also have um, plans for rec cards or postcards that we can distribute through the libraries and other places where you can hand out literature. And we'll be doing a news media outreach to get some publicity as the events draw closer. But the key to all of this, I mentioned February 25th early on, and that is because to do all these things effectively, we really need to have at least the names and dates and a rough idea of what these events look like early on. That allows us to create great collateral. It allows us to have effective pitches to the media. So I encourage you to, to get started right after this meeting thinking about what you might like to do. And you've heard reference to the idea of remake learning in your neighborhood several times already this morning. And this idea really came about as we were thinking about the access and equity issue. We know there are lots of great things to do in Kansas City, but it's not always easy for families in every part of the metro to get to the various activities that are out there. So we thought that if we clustered a lot of great events in some of these neighborhoods who have fewer resources or who have traditionally not had as much access that we can take away that barrier. And at the same time, it gives us a chance to say, hey, what's, what are the unique assets that exist in this neighborhood that we can pause and celebrate during Remake Learning Days and, and bring more awareness to? And by doing that, we create a lot of synergy. And that works and helps with the cross promotion we've been talking about as well. So after we came up with the idea, we thought, you know, this is a great, opportunity to improve equity and access, but it's also a great strategy for us all to use no matter where we're situated in the metropolitan area as we plan our events, because all of these same, same things can happen. The way we're working on it as an equity strategy is through a pilot test um, with what we're calling neighborhood navigators. These will be organizations located in some of the areas of the metro uh, that could use some extra support. And the navigator will be charged with working within their neighborhood, looking at the assets and coming up with at least six events for Remake Learning Days, and then helping to promote those within that neighborhood area. So far, we have the West Side CAN Community Action Network, which uh, focuses on the west side of Kansas City, Missouri, and we're still recruiting some navigators in Kansas City, Kansas, and other parts of Kansas City, Missouri, and Johnson County and North Kansas City, and hopefully South Kansas City as well. We are looking to get a, a broad geographic representation as we test out this approach this year. We'll be giving a little extra support um, with grant funding and promotional uh, consulting to be sure that they have everything they need to do that successfully. But as I mentioned, we really like the idea of the neighborhood approach for all of us who are thinking about hosting Remake Learning Days events. So we invite you to think about who's in your neighborhood. We're gonna do this at the KC STEM Alliance. We have an event kind of sketched out for May 7th. And we are looking at who is located around us, what elementary schools are nearby where we can invite families to come do some hands-on fun learning um, during the festival, and we invite you to do the same thing. And so next up, we'd like to have, have you hear from a couple of people who did events last year, and in, including one who did a great job of neighborhood outreach. So I wanna invite Lauren Joy Graves with the Olathe Public Library. Good morning, Lauren, how are you doing? Hi guys, um, so I'm just gonna let you guys know right now that I'm recovering from gum surgery. So um, I may lisp a little bit and I apologize for that. <laughs> you sound um, great. It's a good morning, yay, thank you. It's the first time that um, I don't have like a little palate thing in my mouth. So we're good. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm Lauren Joy Grace from the Aletha Public Library. I'm from the Indian Creek Library, if you've been to any of our libraries before. Um, and last year we participated in Remake Learning Days. So we participated in Remake Learning Days in a couple of ways. Um, so we had events that we were already doing 
um, that we ended up putting on the KC STEM like calendar um, so everybody could see what events we were already doing, um, as well as making like a, a grand event that we actually got a mini grant from the Bruce Foundation to help us with so that we could reach out to more people. Um, so we had a few things that were hybrid um, so that more people could participate um, in ways that they felt comfortable. Um, and then we also partnered with our communities um, to reach the wider audiences. So we did projects like um, sun catchers, paint rockets, um, make your own rock candy. Um, and then the big one that we did was um, a STEM um, planter pod. So it was made out of all recyclable materials. So um, much like we had heard earlier, this is a very, um, it was an easy project and it was stuff that people, usually had around their house anyway. So we were passing out kits um, that people would come to the library and take with them. Um, they could participate in the program at the library. Um, and then they could also reach us <laughs> at different venues when we went out to our community partners. Um, so one of the things that you see in the corner, there's a little scan me. So this is a reproducible um, project um, so that people could, um, if they had you know, a recyclable tube at home, they could still reproduce this project, even if they didn't feel comfortable getting out in the crowds. Um, and then they could take projects with them um, if they didn't want to do it here, but they could also do it here. Um, and we had um, about 300 plus people that we ended up serving because we, we had so many different locations. Um, so here you can kind of see pictures of the fun stuff that we had. Um, so we had different partners um, from um, our, I guess our, our own neighborhood. So um, normally these weren't people we were, we were partnering with. So now we're part of the city as of this year, but last year we were not part of the city. Um, so I cold called all these people <laughs> um, and asked if they would be willing to help and they were super excited about it. Um, so we had um, a class at the community center, um, which was something that we hadn't really done before. Um, but the kids really enjoyed it um, and they had their own little community garden. So we actually, we worked with them as well. Um, so we did their, we did our project and then we helped them plant that in their community garden there. Um, then we had kits um, that we took to the spot, which is an after school program um, that we partner with. Um, they were also in that first picture when they were painting because they took part the paint rocket stuff and they painted instead of doing paint rockets. So like the kids were using it for whatever they wanted to because they're very creative. So you provide the materials and they will come up with their own thing, <laughs> um, even though we did provide, you know, a thing for them to do. Um, we also had um, kits and in-person programming at two different locations. Um, so we had um, some at the Mahaffey Farmstead Museum. Um, where people, mostly everyone that came in did the project there, but a few people were like, oh, hey, like, I'm going to do it here. Can I take a kit for my kid? And we were like, of course you can. Um, so they were taking kits for other people that they were like, oh, hey, my grandkid would love this. Can I bring one for them too? Um, so that was kind of fun. And then we also had kits um, and in-person programming offered at the farmer's market, where is where we got the largest audience, honestly. Um, and folks, some folks knew that we were doing it because we had promoted it online, but most folks were just like, hey, what are you doing? This is free. <laughs> um, and we had people of all generations working together. Um, you had grandparents helping the little, little ones. You had older siblings helping the little ones. And if you could go to the next slide, Cal. One of our, our big proponents that we had is we also had teen volunteers from the West High School Green Academy. Um, so we were working with the schools as well. Um, and these fine groups of people were super stoked um, about recycling. Um, their whole thing is that they want to do um, like plant growth things and recycling. Um, and so they uh, they found out that we were doing this and they came to like all of our programs <laughs> um, and they helped pack kits. Um, they participated in the actual program itself, like teaching the younger kids how to do it. Um, they handed out kits. Um, a couple of the teens took big packs of kits to their schools also so that they could pass them out. Um, so these volunteers, um, I everybody had a lot of fun with it, but I think that the, the teen volunteer participation was really um, something that helped us spread the word even more because they were telling their friends and family about it, and they also got it out to their schools. Um, so it's a really good way for the community to kind of come together 
um, to make something awesome happen. So I think that might be, I don't remember if I have one more slide or not, but <laughs> I would definitely say, um, I, I definitely cold called a lot of people and it was a little scary, but it worked out really well. Um, so for those of you who are, you know, trying to, to do this for the first time here, um, I think I had one more slide technically, I don't know where it went, uh, but we also worked with stowers. Um, we had microscope kits. So like we were um, like a, a drop location for them to like come pick up stuff. So like we didn't have to do anything for that program because um, we had partnered with somebody else. So um, it's something to consider. Hey, hey, there we go. Um, is that you guys who are, are here trying to figure out what you can do for an event um, is that, you know, we are all here and we make learning days to kind of partner with each other. Um, so participation can look like many things. It can, can be uh, running or distributing programs, providing materials, providing just a space or providing an audience. Like you guys can participate. We're here to help you. Um, and it might be a little scary at first, but people are generally super excited about, you know, trying to get STEM learning to children. Um, so it's a thing that I really feel like, you know, corporations, schools, libraries, neighborhood folks can all come together um, and help try to do, because like we're, we're here together and this is our community. So um, you can do it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lauren. That was a great example of reaching out and making new partnerships. And it's also a perfect introduction to our next speaker because we have Karen Staling, who is with the Stowers hey. Institute. Karen is an example of an organization that doesn't typically offer a lot of youth programming, but still decided to step up and take part in Remake Learning Day. So welcome, Karen. Right. So hello, everyone. Um, I'm Karen Staling. I'm the manager of external engagement for the Stowers Institute. Uh, the Stowers Institute for Medical Research is a nonprofit biomedical research institute. We have um, investigators that are like professors that um, do curiosity, basic research. And then we have technology centers that support their research by um, advancing technologies like uh, microscopy or DNA sequencing. And so for our event, we decided to have it all focused around microscopy. And so as Callan said, um, the Stowers Institute typically doesn't do uh, youth events, but we really wanted to be involved. And our goals for our event was we wanted to support the set the festival and STEM education in Kansas City, since some of those kids might be future scientists that work at the Stowers Institute. We wanted to work with community partners, get to know more people in the STEM ecosystem. We also wanted to tell people in Kansas City and families more about the Stowers Institute for people that were curious about science. And since it's pandemic times, we wanted to have a safe event and to follow pandemic guidelines. And I think most importantly, we wanted to leverage existing resources, which was so important for um, pulling off our event. So what do I mean by this? Existing resources in terms of like videos and images that we um, had already produced at the Stowers Institute uh, videos on microscopy that others had made, um, and then resources in terms of people. So like the scientists that worked in our microscopy center, as well as um, the STEM ecosystem and partnering with Lauren was absolutely essential for um, pulling off our event. And so what did we decide to do? We decided to um, do a hybrid event where we handed out um, a kit with um, these origami microscopes in there along with uh, other items. And then we had a website that supported the kit. So in the kit was um, a fold scope, um, a card that was um, all information about the Stowers Institute for families that didn't know about us. And we're wondering, well, what is that building on Volker that I drive by sometimes? 
Um, I put prepared slides in the kit so um, students could, could look at that and get used to using it. We had material for activities, and then we had a card with a um, QR code that led to our website with lots of videos and sort of online activities. And our biggest challenge, or what we were intimidated by doing this, is just kit distribution, because we don't hand out kits. And so, you know, where do we go? Where do we hand them out? How do we reach out to families? And so big shout out to uh, Callan for putting us in touch with Lauren Graves at the Olathe Library, since they handed our kits at the out our kits at the library. And they handed them out at um, the farmer's market. And then we also handed them out at the Stowers Institute, but that wasn't near as successful as what Laura did. She reached a lot more families. So uh, next slide. So there's my shout out. All right, so here's what our little card looked like that we put in the kit. So we have the scan me um, and you can scan it and go to our site and see what we all uh, put together. Um, but what we're thinking about doing for this year is also handing out these kits again, but adding a live component. Hopefully the pandemic will cooperate. And what we can do is to bring microscopes to different locations around the city. And so we could have some kind of hands-on live exploration activities. And then we would just give families, you know, these fold scope kits to take home to then explore on their own. So check out our website and I'm going to put my email in the chat just in case uh, you want to partner with me. I'm happy to come to your organization. <laughs> if you have families, we, we will bring the activities and the people. So um, I think that's it. So well, thank that's you. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing, Karen. Um, I know that our partners in Pittsburgh did the activity and all the online guide and they held it up as one of their favorite events. So we appreciate that. Okay. All right. We are to the point where we're about ready to take a break. I'm going to introduce Ann Zimmerman with the Casey STEM Alliance and she's going to tell us what's going to happen next. Thank you, Callan, and good morning, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so we've been sitting for about an hour. It's time to take a short bio break. Um, but when you come back, we're going to invite you to go into a breakout room and have some conversation. Um, this is, we hope that you've been um, motivated, stimulated by some of the ideas that you heard today and want to do a little bit of brainstorming. So um, as you come back, you'll be invited into a small group. And um, just take a few minutes to introduce each uh, yourselves to the group and maybe just share what resonated with you the most this morning. And, and even what are you excited about for kids in Kansas City this year? And then the next thing, we're gonna have you actually jump into a conversation, just a brainstorming about what you think your organization could do this year. If you participated last year, fantastic. Um, maybe you could build on that, invite somebody new. And then when you are ready to, we want to capture all of those amazing things. So I'm going to, let's see here, show you the uh, ed tech we're going to use this morning is uh, called a Padlet. And so I'm going to put the uh, link to the Padlet in, the, in your chat. And all of the facilitators and the breakouts will also have this. But in fact, right now, I can, um, let's go ahead and copy that. And then you can act, make sure that you can access the Padlet. And what you're going to do is just write real time as you are talking what, um, what you might be interested in doing. If you're a program provider, um, maybe you're a connector, you have an audience that you really want to make sure is connected to Karen's awesome fold scopes, or um, maybe you're a promoter. We have some great uh, friends on the call today from Startland, and, um, and they're connected throughout the city. So how, where do you see yourself plugging into any of these different roles? Um, so when we, uh, the, the breakouts will go for about 25 minutes. So uh, when we break now, we invite you to come back about 10.05 and um, go into your breakout session, have a wonderful conversation. And then at 10.30, um, we really encourage you to stick around. We have some great updates on other initiatives that are happening across the ecosystem. Um, and one in particular is related to a, um, a new technology and a new project called the CACI Initiative, 
which is looking at um, helping connect young people with opportunities through an app. And this is something that's being led by the Casey Public Library with an NSF grant. So we're looking for organizations to be a part of that. So we really wanna make sure that you stick around, please. I know it's a long morning, but uh, we would love to have you uh, come back and, and spend the next hour with us. So um, we'll go ahead and take a break and um, we'll see you all in the breakouts at 10.05.